Well, good morning. Let me uh, start off here. Are there any pilots in the audience? So I know we got a few ex-combat pilots out here. I'd say most of us probably aren't. So I'm going to ask you to take a little tour with me through the eyes of one, but in two very different airplanes. Let's see if we got the, uh, OK. So right now, you're flying a P-38 Lightning. So this is a World War II long-range interceptor. You're in a combat situation, flying about 350 miles an hour. There's targets. There's adversaries everywhere. Your eyes and your brain are your sensors and your data processing. So most of your time is actually being spent looking out the window for those adver adversaries. And not a whole lot of that fraction is devoted to actually thinking about your mission and your tactics. And so this was a very dangerous business. If you think about just the last two years of World War II, over 7,500 American fighter aircraft were lost in total. So now, let's fast forward to today. So now, you're, you're flying the fifth generation F-35 Lightning II. This is Mach 1.6, over 700 miles per hour. Now, you still have a crew of one yourself. But alongside you, you have an advanced computer system. It's a co-pilot. It's a navigator. It's a weapon systems operator. It's your air traffic controller. So this is a completely different situation. This aircraft is actually a flying sensor. It's integrating all kinds of information for you. Surrounding the airplane, looking out in every direction, are visual and IR cameras. And you also have an advanced electronically scanned radar assembly. And by the way, all of these sensors are being tasked in real time, automatically, by the airplane. All of that information is being brought back and integrated in the advanced visual display in your helmet. So now, what you're seeing is integrated data like terrain, navigation data, weapons data, tracks both on the air and on the ground, aircraft in proximity. And when you look around, when you look down, you're not looking at your shoes or the floor of the airplane. You're actually looking at the ground below you. With that advanced synthetic vision in the helmet, you are literally able to look any direction through the airplane itself. So what is this? This is actually an example of advanced human-machine teaming. You're collaborating with an intelligent machine through that advanced visual interface in your helmet. So human-machine teaming, that means leveraging the capabilities of the machine for the human to know more, to do more, to make better decisions. And that is really a quantum leap. So now, let me just give this thesis. Essentially, these technologies, this human-machine teaming, when I think about it, as a CTO of Lockheed Martin, I work with teams that are engineering a better tomorrow. And to me, no technologies feel more like the future than machine intelligence and human-machine teaming. They are really, as I've shown in this F-35 example, enhancing productivity. They're enhancing US competitiveness in all kinds of industries through reducing cost, through reducing time, through reducing risk across our nation. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Let me start with an example that now is not up in the air. It's actually on the ground in our factories of today and our factories of the future. We're using what we call the Collaborative Human Immersive Laboratory, the CHILL. We're actually using that to build satellites in the virtual world. So I'm going to start off. We're actually going to be on a motion capture floor. So this is in our final assembly building for satellites in Denver, Colorado. The engineer here is actually viewing and working through a satellite building operation looking at this virtual simulated factory in his VR headset. At the same time, 
There are motion capture cameras that are tracking his every move. His avatar is duplicating those moves in this virtual world, working with other operators to build the digital twin of this satellite, of this real, actual satellite. So now I've moved into a cave, a 3D virtual environment. And here the team is working something out. They see that the operator actually has to lie down on a diving board, reach out over the satellite to do this installation operation. So they reconfigure it in real time. OK, now he can stand up and do that. He's not putting himself at risk. He's not putting that $200 million satellite at risk. So now we can actually build the entire satellite virtually before we touch a piece of hardware. On the left, the simulated satellite. On the right, you see the same satellite on video going through that lifting operation. And it is perfect the very first time. So what have we learned? We've learned how to do things like take out half half of the moves and lifts and the risks associated with building a satellite. We've learned to take out two thirds of the actual physical distance traveled by the satellite on the factory floor. So now you see, we're really driving productivity. We are driving competitiveness through examples like this. What are we doing? We're actually amplifying human capacity and productivity. We're actually taking the human and enabling that, that person to do so much more with their own inherent capabilities. But I would say it's actually more, and we've got to keep in mind that it's more than just the dollars saved, the time saved. And I'll give an example where we're actually saving property, saving human life. So I'd like you to consider, and, and I'm going to touch here now on a theme, the theme of autonomy, which has been very huge in the tech world in the last couple of years. And so, consider an, where a uh, firefighting application, this was actually in Australia, they used an unmanned aerial system to relay some information back. And they were able to actually save 100 structures, over $50 million in property. They were actually able to save, most importantly, many lives. But this is just the beginning. And so if you think about wildfires, and these have been on the news a lot lately, from California to Tennessee. So you think about fighting these fires. The US Forest Service spent over $2.6 billion on fires alone last year. In one week last August, they spent an incredible $243 million. A single large fire can cost more than $2 billion in property losses. And don't forget about the lives every year Several lives are lost. In 2013 alone, 20, uh, 29 firefighters lost their lives in these kinds of blazes. So how can autonomy and human machine teaming help? Recently, Lockheed Martin did a demonstration with four of our autonomous technologies working, working together to show how you can take this to the next level in fighting a moderate-sized fire. So in this exercise, we started off with a Indigo, this is a small quadcopter. It actually has an infrared camera on it so it can go out and find that hot spot. Next, we used this hand-launched Desert Hawk. It went out and actually located a stranded civilian, I'll say a simulated stranded civilian. Relayed that data back. We sent out our SARA, our Sikorsky Autonomous Research Aircraft. It went out, it located the individual, it came in, landed safely near, nearby, and actually was able to evacuate that person and bring that person back without ever putting a pilot at risk. Believe it or not, the command and control for this is actually a very simple iPad interface. And last but not least, now we're sending out here, this is a uh, autonomous KMAX heavy lift helicopter, thousands of operations in places like Afghanistan, collects water and ultimately douses the fire. So you can see, in this fairly complicated example, how you can use autonomy and human machine teaming to protect property and lives, to save time and money, and to actually make it look easy. So this is an incredible time. Human machine teaming, machine intelligence, they are transforming our world today like nothing else. These are technologies that when we look at them, you know, they're disrupting how you drive a car, they're disrupting how you fly an airplane, or build a satellite. But more importantly, 
They are taking the dull, the dirty, and the dangerous out. They are unleashing human creativity. They are enabling people to do much more. So think about it. We're actually upgrading our airmen, our soldiers, our sailors. We're letting them focus on those missions and those tactics that are most important. We're upgrading our manufacturing so that we can increase productivity and allow our teams to focus on inventing the next new project or product. And we're upgrading public safety and saving lives. So it's been a real pleasure to be here with you today. And remember, this is just the beginning of a revolution in the teaming between humans and intelligent machines. Join me, join Lockheed Martin, our partners, our customers, our nation in revolutionizing things like air and space flight, manufacturing, education and training, and ultimately the business of saving lives and securing our nation. Thank you.